Alrighty, so way back in the day, I showed you how to do a gradient fill with one of the long ago versions of Ink Stitch, and I don't remember which one it was. But uh, it wasn't anywhere near as easy as it is now with version 3. Version 3 actually has it in the params. So this video, I'm going to show you how to do a gradient fill in Ink Stitch version 3. Look at me with hair. <laughs> Alrighty, so I'm actually going to set this up to do on hats. So I'm going to make my settings for what I usually set a hat for. And uh, 140 mil by 60, if I remember right. And then we're going to do an LTL just like I did on that other one. But I need my LTL. In this case, I need it to be fill, and I want blue, and set fill color. So fill color is going to be blue. Now, it's going to be a lot of steps involved here. So that LTL I'm going to duplicate. Right now I'm going to duplicate it one time, and then I'm going to select my going to create something to do my cutout cutaway with and I also want that to be a fill no stroke and after you draw it out it's already selected so I'm going to go in here and hit my select tool I'm going to press shift I'm going to select the LTL that's behind it I'm going to go to path and we're going to go with intersection excellent so now I have my intersection pieces and I need to use those intersect intersection pieces to cut away the inside of the LTL. So now we're going to, okay, that is my intersection pieces. I'm going to, I'm going to duplicate the intersection pieces. And then I'm going to press shift again and select the LTL in the background. Path difference. Now I have a cutout where I have a cutout of my intersection pieces. And I also have the cutout from the LTL. Outstanding. We're on a roll. All right. Now what we need to do, we need to pick the intersection pieces, those. We need to duplicate that. We need to select the LTL text, go to path, and we're going to break apart. With that break apart, now we have six pieces of that. And the bottom three are the bottom three pieces of the LTL, and top three are obviously the top three pieces. So I want these two to be in between. Now these bottom three, we're going to select another color. I'm going to go into color set and I want something like that. Outstanding. Go into this bottom or this as the machine stitches, it stitches up. So I'm going to call this the first cutaway part. I need to also break away or break apart that cutaway part. And then this cutaway part here, the first part, is going to be the same color as my bottom piece. So I'm going to select the little eyedropper, pick from colors, and I'm going to select that same color as that bottom piece. And if I hide the blue top part, you can see that it, that it did. So on those, when you break it apart, it's already going to, it's going to select the three bits for you. So set the color and then we're going to go to extension the ink stitch params it will error out that first time that's what it does i'm going to go right back into params and we need to select under uh, unselect the fill underlay underlay and then we need to unselect the under path now we got to figure out okay what are we going to do for spacing between rows we're going to start out the default 
I really don't know and I'm purely guessing. So I'm going to do end of row spacing at 1.5. Looks good. I mean, just can't really tell from this, but it looks good to start off with. Problem is, I need to flip it 180 degrees. So, my angle line of stitches, I'm going to set to 180, which will flip that direction 180 degrees. Now it's stitching, it's coming up from the top. But that's that's fine. You could you could change that too with commands, but I I don't care. But the dense part needs to be at the bottom. So hit apply and quit. Outstanding. Now we're going to break apart the next three cutout pieces. We're going to do the exact same thing. It's already the color we need it. We don't need to flip it 180 because that it's already going to be the right way there. We just need to go into params and we need to set end of row spacing 1.25. And we need to turn off the underlay and we need to turn off the underpath. And now we should be good. Excellent. Hit apply and quit. Alrighty. We are just about there. You know something else that I really wanted to do. Let's let's do a quick let's do a quick uh visual and make sure we're good here. Zoom, zoom, zoom. Get realistic. Let's see what the unrealistic, realistic looks like. And it actually looks pretty good. Something else that I wanted to do too, I wanted to do a black outline. So we have all of the pieces selected. And with all of the pieces selected, I'm going to duplicate. On my duplicates, I'm going to go path, union. So that turned all those duplicates into one bit, in one chunk. Now we do need to break that apart, a simple break apart, just because we're going to be stitching that. It needs the jump part. Yeah. You, you're, you're with me, right? Okay. No fail. Stroke. Stroke. Stroke style. 1.5. I'm going to leave it on 1.5. I like that. We're going to go straight into ink stitch tool satin convert line to satin. Ah, standing. And let's do one more quick visual. Room zoom zoom. Oh yeah, realistic. Realistic looks pretty good. Those gaps in there might be just a little too much, but we'll see. I'm gonna go ahead and stitch this out. We're gonna watch it stitch out and then we're gonna talk about it. So I'll be right back.
And we're back. So, this is a picture of the stitch outs you just watched. And it looks really good. Still, the, the gap in between some of the stitches are just a little bit more than I'd care for. So, what we're going to do is fix that real quick. And it's the... Uh, it's these three here is one direction. So I'm going to go into params. And I'm actually going to lower the default and the end row. So I'm going to go with point 0.2 on the spacing between rows. And end row spacing, I'm just going to go to 1. So that looks pretty good there. I'll have apply quit. Do the same thing on the other three cutouts. Hit params. And go two and one. Hit apply and quit. So let's see what a let's see what the visualizer shows. See if that looks any better in the visual. Well the room zoom zoom that. And hit realistic. Okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The realistic looks a whole lot better. I think we're good as far as that goes. Matter of fact, I'm going to stitch this on a hat. My machine is not set up for hats right now. And I'm not going to set it up for a hat just for one hat. But the next time I do a run of hats, I will stitch this out and I will post it on my website i will post it on facebook i also have a mastodon and a tumblr somewhere thereabouts so it'll be a i'll post it to my website which will automatically post it to facebook mastodon tumblr and if you've got me in any of those on low-tech linux it will show up so that's all for this video as always Thank you so much for watching.